Yeah, just uh, what did Phil tell you happened to his hand and, and what's his prognosis right now? Well, I just, I actually, I met with the doctors. They got him scans. They got him x-rays and they're supposed to get back to me around 1.30 today. So hopefully I'll have an answer by then. Hopefully I'll have an answer for you. Hopefully I'll have an answer. All I know, Rich, is he kind of fell on it uh, when okay. he went down. So it's something in his hand or his wrist and they're going to let me know the prognosis. Hopefully in a little bit here. Well, we'll go next to Andy. Hey, Jeff. I was just wondering, what's the quarterback situation after Dennis? Who's the third stringer right now? What do you see from some of those younger guys? Well, you're you're assuming Phil is Phil is not going to play. Um, if you're asking about the third stringer, so I'm going to wait to. I'm hopeful, you know, that I get some good news. Like I said. Um, and if, if we find out Phil cannot go, then we'll sit down and we'll figure out who is the best to be the third right now. Fair question, Andy. And I'm giving you a truthful answer. I don't want to say something and then get in there with coach Signetti and, and decide if we have to go down that route, that it's not the case. And then someone will get upset with me. We'll go next to Kevin. Hey coach, I want to ask you about Travis Levy uh, between this year and last year, you talked a lot about his leadership, um, kind of his quiet leadership. For him to get that kickoff return when he did yesterday, how big was that just for him? Um, and not just the team, but for him personally too. Um, I, you know, Travis has kind of grown, Kevin, just his leadership role. It's, it's not quiet anymore. He's kind of our vocal guy now too, which is really cool to see. Um, you know, Travis had a really good day running the ball and he also had two huge catches, the one third down conversion on the option route at the end there, um, in the four minute, if you remember. Um, so one, he's a huge part of our offense Two, He's on every special team. And, and those are the guys that you try to, you talk about, um, guys want to play in the NFL. You got to be able to play special teams. He's on all of them. And he's one of our best special teams players and he can play running back and he can catch the ball. And he just had a 96 yard kickoff return. Um, I joked with him this morning. I said, you know, he, he muffed that punt, got caught up in the wind um, that led to that one score. Um, I knew when he caught the ball, he was going to redeem it and score. I just had the feeling. And he's just, that's the type of guy he is. No one was going to stop him on that play. We'll go next to Dan. Coach, uh, you mentioned Travis running the ball, and I know Alec, too. Um, from the offensive line standpoint, um, when you have that many guys able to run the ball, how does that kind of change up the way you approach offensive line? Do you make different schemes, just, you know, package different things for different guys, or is it all just kind of the same, same, same with them? It's the same. I mean, you might call a different play for a different back, but you don't block them any differently. You know, we major in several run schemes, and they can all do them. Um, but what a day yesterday, 250 yards um, on the ground. I think Pat averaged 10.7 per carry. Just look at the old line and the tight ends blocking yesterday, 250 yards, no sacks. That's, but that's what we should have done. And I just, that's what I, I showed the team, the video downstairs. They weren't going to stop us. I mean, the whole story of this game, Dan, if you, as you watch it, it was penalties on defense, giving them yards to get them close, almost having a goal line stand. Um, it was, as you watch this game, it was like 14 was the magic number. I mean, it was 28, seven, we're ready to go up 60 to seven. And it was a matter of when are we going to blow them out and get away from this 14 point deal? Um, and we just kept letting them back in the game was self-inflicted. If we just didn't have penalties and gave the ball back to the offense, that number might've been like 350. I mean, you should see these guys blocking yesterday and finishing. I just showed, showed the offense like 10 clips. I just showed the whole team like 10 clips of these guys coming off the ball. I mean, it was unbelievable. Um, so I know I'm getting a little bit excited, but I just watched that offensive tape and it was, it was beautiful. We'll go next to Rich. There we go. Hey, talk about Trey Barry a bit. Uh, not only does he get open, but he does catch balls and crowds too. And uh, there was one play he came back up for Dennis who was in big trouble. Uh, I guess my question is, is he kind of separating himself a little bit in that tight end room? I think when you look at um, you look at the tight end two different ways. If you looked at Joey yesterday, Rich, Joey had some like big time blocks that sprung some huge runs yesterday. Um, Trey had those catches. You know, he had five receptions for 98 yards, two third down conversions. The one at the end of the game, I just you know I joked with him. He should have caught it the first time. If he was six nine, he would have caught it the first time. He's only six seven, so he had to tip it to himself. 
And then he had the one down the sideline, you know, where great scheme. I mean, they got him wide open. Then he ran away from everybody. He's starting to play the game faster. He's starting to understand our offense. Um, he's fun to watch, Rich. He's a hard guy to defend, really hard guy to defend. So when it comes to the passing aspect, I think Trey, yes, he is. Uh, but Joey's still one of our best blockers. Is it like a high football IQ with that kid? Um, you know, I'm not around him as much as Coach Shimko and Coach Signetti. Um, but I'd imagine he picks up on things pretty quick. We'll go next to Andy. Jeff, Alec got the start yesterday, running back. Week before that, it was Travis. What's the thought process with who gets the start at running back? I know you guys rotate a lot of them in there anyway. Well, I think it's the way um, we really like the way Sink practiced during the week um, and felt comfortable with him knowing what we were going to run on the first play there. Um, but then, as you saw, we rotate those guys in. So, you know, shoot, who knows who's going to get the, the first snap next week. I've kind of said this before, whether it's a defense or offense, um, you know, I don't take, I don't take it as, you know, sync started. So he's a starter this week or Pat starts that we, it's just, they're all going to do it, man. And uh, they need to understand that. And I think they do because they care about each other. We'll take two more for Kevin. Coach, I want to ask you about Brady Olson, the UMass quarterback. Uh, obviously a local kid. Had a great day yesterday, I thought. Just what you saw from him and um, just kind of your thoughts on 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 how they played yesterday as well. Um, they kept it pretty simple for him. You know, the coach made a ton of checks from the sideline. Um, you know, talking offensively, like I said, I, I just – we just – way too many free yards. Um, but I do respect they played hard. Um, the Olsen kid, I think, has a chance to be a really good player. Um, tough to just judge him off of one game. But for a guy to come in, um, you know, without being the starter and he's only a freshman, um, that's impressive that he was able to manage the game and not look out of place. And, you know, um, I know he's really well coached. I know his high school coaches are great coaches. Um, I know his uncle's a great coach, his dad. Um, and I, I think he's got a really good future ahead for them at UMass. And, um, I'm really happy for him. Seems like a great kid. And we'll wrap things up with Asa. There's this never ending debate about turnovers and whether four of them is kind of luck or skill. Um, you guys have been so effective at getting turnovers last year and then continuing into this year. What makes you guys so effective at doing that um, consistently? We practice it and show it probably as much or if not more than anybody in the country. We start off every practice with an attack the ball period. Every day, Coach Tem starts a defensive meeting with clips from around the NFL of guys attacking the ball. Um, and we just try to constantly go over it over and over and over. It's just like anything else, right? Um, I don't think there's luck involved. I think you have to uh, deliberately attack the football, and I think it has to be taught, and it becomes a trained behavior. And we have five takeaways on the year in two games, and I don't think that's good enough. I think there's way more out there that we're not getting. That'll wrap things up for today. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, guys. Have a great weekend. Enjoy the NFL games. And um, I appreciate you guys all coming on. Jason.